This is another very simple project and kind of geeky. I've made my own digital watch. If you think there is nothing to learn with this simple project, well, you are wrong. We will learn how to use the 80 mega 328p AU chip without an external clock by burning an 8 MHz internal clock bootloader. That will make our design way simpler since we don't need too many extra components and we will also save some space on our PCB. The chip will work at low voltage, 3.2 volts in this case from a bottom cell battery. The battery has low capacity, so we will need low consumption and we will also see how to achieve that and make the watch work for more hours. So, we will take a look at the PCB layout and how I've made it. Solder the components, program the chip and test it. Make sure you click the subscribe button and activate the notification bell in order to see my future projects. And if you would like to support me, check my Patreon page. Thank you for that and guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is how the watch works. I press the button and the hour LED will stay turned on and the minute LED will blink a few times. For example, right now it's 10 and 25 minutes. If I long press on the button, I am able to set the hour. Press the button till the desired hour is reached. Then long press once again and now we set the minutes. When the desired minute value is set, long press once again and exit the time set loop. Now I press the button and the new time is shown. It's not 10 and 25 anymore, now it's 9 and 55 minutes. In order to save power, the LEDs are always turned off and only when the button is pressed they will be turned on. As you can see the design is simple. We have the Atmega chip in the middle and 12 LEDs all around, each with a 200 ohms resistor to limit the current. We also have the push button with a pull down that will control everything. On the back side we have a space for a 3V bottom cell socket and also some pads for the SPI and Watt communication ports. Why? Well we need the SPI pins to burn the bootloader and the Watt port to upload the code and we will see that in a moment. Ok so right here I have two more pads for hour and minutes, but I won't use those anymore. When I designed the PCB, I had the idea of using these pads to set the time. But now I've made the code a bit more complicated, so I'm able to set everything with just one button. So let's get started. I've used Easy EDA and create my schematic. You have both the schematic and the Gerbers together with a part list for this PCB below if you want to make the same project. I place the Atmega 328p AU version of the chip, the LEDs and resistors, next a few capacitors and the button and that's it. The schematic is more than simple. I create a new layout and give it the shape of a watch. After I place all the components and root all the tracks, I fill the board with copper and add all the extra text on the silk layer. Check for errors, save and generate Gerbers. Now I select order from GLC PCB and that will open a new window. GLC PCB is the sponsor of this video and a professional PCB manufacturer. They offer you a lot of options for their services and for prototyping your circuits are great and probably the best ratio between quality, amount and price. If you have a simple project like this one, send the files to GLC PCB and get good results with such low prices. I leave the default settings and I order the PCBs for 1.7 euros or 2 dollars as you can see here. Shipping to Spain cost me 6 more dollars but that using normal shipping. DHL is a bit more expensive, but also faster. 7 days later I received 10 boards in a cardboard box and also a small gift. After a quick inspection I gather all the components and I start soldering. I first solder a Virgin 80 Mega 328 chip. 
it has to be a brand new chip in order to burn the 8 MHz internal clock bootloader. I've tried this with other chips that already had the 16 MHz external bootloader and it didn't work, so I recommend you to order some brand new chips. Then I soldered 12 200 ohm resistors, one for each LED. I've used 0402 size, which is very very small, so I had to use solder paste and a hot air gun to solder all the components of this project. Now for the LEDs. I've ordered 20 of these red 0402 LEDs, but the seller from eBay only sent me 10. Sometimes that happens, so I had to use a 0805 size, which are bigger. But with some solder paste and carefully heating each LED, the components got soldered from below, so that's great. Next, I soldered the button and its pull down resistor, and on the back, I soldered the battery socket, and we are ready to burn the boot loader. For that, I've used an Arduino Uno. Make these connections from the Arduino Uno to the SPI pads on the back of the watch. Make sure to solder ground and VCC pins as well as in the schematic. Now go to the link in the description and download the breadboard.zip file. This file will give us the 8 MHz on the breadboard type of board. Once downloaded, copy the breadboard folder from inside of the zip file and go to the Arduino directory, to hardware and paste that folder there. If there is no hardware folder, create a new one and name it like that, and after paste the breadboard folder inside. Now run Arduino IDE. If I go now to Tools, Boards, I have the Atmega 328 on a breadboard with 8 MHz internal clock board. Select that. Now go to Examples, Arduino ISP and open that example. Connect the Arduino Uno to the PC, select the CAM of that Arduino and upload the code to the Arduino Uno. Now go to Tools, make sure once again that the 8 MHz board is selected and change the programmer from Arduino AVR ISP to Arduino as ISP. Now go to Tools once again and select Burn Bootloader, and the LEDs of the Arduino will blink very fast, and after you receive the message, the bootloader is burned to the new Atmega chip. So remove the wires and let's upload the code. For that you will need an FTDA programmer, or maybe use the Arduino Uno wart pins. You have both schematics for that below. I connect my FTDA programmer to the wart pins. In the Arduino IDE, change the programmer back to AVR ISP and upload the code for 8 MHz internal clock board. And that's it! I've made my own watch. Be careful, you will definitely need a 100 nanofarad capacitor between the DTR pin and the reset pin in order to upload codes. So make sure you solder that before uploading. Now the code is very long, but don't worry. A lot of the lines are repeating, since I make the same instruction for each LED and for each hour or minute. Download it and read all the comments line by line in order to understand more. Ok, so to reduce power consumption, I disable the ADC, the SPI and Wart communication and timer 1 and 2. I leave timer 0 active, since that will control the millis function. And I use that millis function to count the elapsed seconds, minutes and hours. Since the ADC is disabled and the button is connected to analog input A0, I've placed an interruption for that pin using these registers. In the interruption vector I enable the ADC and after I finish the hour display I disable it back. Now here each 1000 milliseconds I increase the seconds value by 1. And each 60 seconds the minutes value and each 60 minutes the hours value. Read the code for more details. Ok, so now I measure the battery voltage, and it is around 3.47 volts. Using the low power mode of the chip, at that voltage the board draws around 2.5 mA of current, and around 8 mA when the button is pressed. The battery has a capacity of 320 mA hour, so it should last around 90 hours or almost 4 days. 
but since the voltage will drop and the chip won't work with voltages below 2.7 volts, I can say that that could last around 2 days. So for that I've bought this cell battery charger for $2 and use rechargeable batteries. And I know it's not the most efficient project but it looks good and makes you look like a geek. At the end I've used this kind of velcro strip and make a belt for the watch so I could wear it on my arm. Now I think this looks pretty decent, right? So guys this was how I've made this simple and small project. Now you know how to use this chip without the external crystal and how to add a few lines of codes for low power mode. You have a ultra low power mode example code below that will deactivate the low consumption mode when a button is pressed. So check my webpage electronoops.com for more details, photos and schematics and also all the example codes. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you have learned something new. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. And also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. Remember if you consider helping my project check my patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.